Jason back with just another quick update on the the reef system and how it's coming. Um, I picked up a few things here today. Um, this is the uh, new C the new 200 series 230 uh, max spec gyro pump. Um, I was debating between this pump and uh, MP10s. Um, on my last system here, I ran three MP10s, and the the pumps MP10s are very well made, um, and they're marketed very well. Um, I was never real happy with the flow, um, and that had more a lot more to do with placement. My system was 18 inches deep, and basically I had a I was kind of forced where to put the pumps because if I moved them too close to the surface, you know, they would draw water and blow bubbles all over the place. And if I put them too close to the bottom, they would pull up the substrate. So they pretty much had to basically just sit in the middle. Um, the problem with that was that I ran into a lot anyways, is that that was pretty much where the height of the coral was at as well. So like this basically MP10s would just blast them all day long. So, um, I didn't have the wireless, um, the new uh, quiet drive models. I had the one with the white box. Um, and I know the new quiet drives push a little bit more water, um, but I think the disbursement's basically the same. So um, I'm gonna try these. Um, this is the, the reason I went with this pump is um, this is the new model it was just released, um, which comes with the new controller, um, which has, you know, can basically be configured um, however you want your flow pattern you know you can have it set up randomly change throughout the day um, but also one of the big reasons I went with this one is with the new controller you can now run two pumps and they sell them so you can basically buy the bundle with one pump and a controller and then you can just buy a second pump and not have to buy another controller and the one controller will hook up to two pumps now with just one plug so less things to plug into my energy bar. Um, I always like that too. Um, when I just figured it out the other day, I think with everything I'm going to run, like I think I'm only using six outlets. So um, that's actually going to be pretty nice. Maybe it was seven. Um, so that's my, those are my power heads that I'm going with. Um, if they don't work out, I'll try something else, but um, the other thing I got, and I'll just quickly talk about it, and this isn't really so much for the system itself, but um, before I tore down my last system, I picked up one of these and started playing with it. And uh, there's just a million uses for this this pump. Um, this is an inline pump, which basically just you hook up to uh, just a tubing on each side of it, and you know. Um, I was using it to mix salt, but more than that, I was using it for maintenance on the tank. So um, I would, you know, plug in two on two two hoses on one on each side, and on the one side, I would basically stick it uh, into a filter sock, and I would use it to siphon the bottom of my sump to remove detritus, and it would just basically dump right into the filter sock, and then I'd just wash the filter sock. Um, same with water changes, I would just plug this pump in and, you know, run, you know, 10 feet of, or maybe even longer, 10 feet of hose, and it would just run it up to my sink and pull the water out that way. And I was doing the same thing for my uh, brute can to put the water back in just using this pump, and it, it worked really well. Um, and they're very cheap. Um, there's just a lot of uses for these. So for that reason, I just picked up another one. Um, basically going to be doing the same thing with it um, also I picked up um, I was working on some of my plumbing kind of how I wanted to do it um, this is going to be my design for my manifold so to quickly explain that and I'd like some feedback because um, I ran a manifold on my last system but um, I basically only ran it for the UV sterilizer which I ended up taking off the system like within a month after setting it up and um, one reactor and that was it and I only ended up ever using the reactor one so um, and this one here this will be the where the return comes in and I'll have a union um, this is three-quarter inch 
um, into this T here, which if you're looking at my sump right there, that right there where that barb's sticking down with that, that's where the return pump will be. Um, right there. Um, so it'll have the union right above it, and then above that, the T. So the T will the T will sit, you know, just over it here, and on one side of the T, it will just have this um, union here with this. Well, I forget these things are called CPEX, right? Um, true valves, um, and that will shoot the side off. That will go to the chiller. The chiller will sit down on this end of the sump so that's the one for the chiller and then on this side i'll have a union and run two more cpex on half inch to run one will run the uh, zeovit reactor and i don't plan on running um, media uh, through a reactor um, it will be sitting in my sump but in case my phosphates or something like that shoots up one time and I need to throw a reactor on there with some GFO or something, I'll have another one to do that. So basically I'm just going to have a reactor standing by for um, in case I run into an emergency basically type thing. Um, then from there it will go up and into the return. Um, that's pretty much it. Um, that is the about the big old huge one and a half inch uh, valve here for dialing in the uh, bean animal system. So, and then I bought just a couple of unions for that. I got to actually buy four more of those um, to install everything. Uh, let's see what else. Um, I got my RODI unit. I still have my older RODI unit. Um, but I may, I may, tr I'm going to try this and see how it works. Um, let me move this stuff out of the way. This is the, sorry, just one second. This is the aquatic light. Uh, RODI system. So in this one here, you got the carbon block, a sediment, and then the RO membrane and then i bought the the extension which has two di filters right so it'll be basically be five stages there um it does doesn't come with a flush valve um, that was one of my concerns but i mean it, it has just like a, the same thing as a flush valve but it's just constant but flush valves are like 10 bucks so you know, it's, I just bought one. I mean, why not? Um, and then just a, two, a TDS meter as well. So if the TDS is coming out of this thing is more than just a couple parts per million, I will just take this, throw it under, which I intend to hook up in the, under the kitchen sink anyways, and just use it for drinking water. Um, and then the DI resin, or the DI, which uh, one here will basically just go to waste. Um, I think that's it for now. Um, my lights and my return pump are next. Um, right now I'm debating between uh, Red Dragon and the new uh, Ecotech Vectra. I think I'm leaning more towards spending the extra money and getting a Red Dragon. Um, we'll see how that goes. And then on my lights, um, that one will be a surprise. I'll, I'll wait to talk about that one. Um, that's pretty much it. Uh, I'll be back probably in another month or so with another update.